to you from where it comes. In the words of Marcus Gavi, a famous philosopher, he said, that any man without the knowledge of his history and rules is like a tree without the necessary taproot. And so it is that the origin and rules of the Igbos could be traced to Israel, home of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Israel, who had twelve sons, namely Reuben and Simon, Levi and Judah, Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher, Issachar and Zebulun, Joseph and Benjamin. Written in Genesis chapter 29, verses 30. The twelve sons of Jacob later became the forebearers of the twelve tribes of Israel. God in this order was the seventh son of Jacob, who had seven sons, namely Ziphon and Hagi, Shuni and Ishbon, Eri, Arode, and Are. Go to Genesis chapter 46, verses 16. Eri, together with his two younger brothers, Arode and Alev, later became the three ancestors of the Igbo. Another question, sir. Can you explain why the three ancestors of the Igbos migrated to this place known as Eastern Nigeria, and in what year? Yes, I can explain. Sometime in the Middle Eastern countries, famine struck for about seven years and the surrounding neighboring countries were forced by hunger to sojourn in Egypt. And so Jacob and his families and relations were forced to stay in Egypt. But before this, one of the sons of Jacob, known as Joseph, had been sold to slavery in Egypt by some of his brothers. Joseph later rose to be the governor general of Egypt under a certain king known as Pharaoh. Jacob and his sons and relations who traveled to Egypt were about 70 in number. They lived happily in Egypt until they began to suffer persecution in the hands of the Egyptians. Later, Eri, the fifth son of God, foresaw the persecution and wickedness of the Egyptians on the Israel. He decided to live in time. He thought that a time is coming when the Israelis in Egypt will be taken as slaves. And so, Eri left with his brother, Arode and Alev, together with his half-brother, who later begot the sons and people known today as the Jonathan. A lot of people from the tribes of the Edomites also followed in this journey. The Edomites that followed Eri today later begot the present Edo people of Nigeria. They made their journey through Ethiopia and Sudan and landed in Aguleri around the year 1305 BC. Aguleri is the first ancestral home of the Igbos. Another question, sir. What are the evidences that Eri and his companions first settled in Aguleri, the first ancestral home of the Igbos? The evidences that Eri and his brothers settled in Aguleri are many. There is a house in Aguleri today, built by Eri, known as Obu Gad. That house today is a temple and the house of Eri himself. It is still located in Aguleri, known purely today as a tourist center. There is also a trinity tree at the burial place of Eri. These trees are three but strongly united by a single taproot. You can see them in our glory till date. Eri was a religious man, very strong and resourceful. He lived with his brothers so closely until they developed one culture and language identity for his descendants to come. This generation was later known today as Ndibo. Later, his brother Arode and Areli dispersed to different settlements, making up the various towns of Igbo today. Eri and his companions were not dark in complexion. It is because of the hot climate here that changed their color to the present dark brown. Another question, sir. Can you point to us, sir, some of the descendants of Eri today? Answer. Eri, the first father of the Igbos, has about five sons, namely 
Agolo. Agolo was the ancestor of the people known today as Agolewe. The second son of Eri he named Atta. His descendants could be seen in the present Atta kingdoms of Egala in Kyrgyzstan. The third he named Oba, while the fourth he named Hebrew in remembrance of his origin from Hebrew. The last of his sons known as Mary, who begot the present and the kingdom. The Hebrews came to be known from the word Hebrew, the name of the first son of Ari. Ari loved his first son so dear that the name Ibo today came from the corruption of the word Hebrew, which is the name of the first son of Ari. The first son of Ari was very fiery and highly spiritual, that he was the greatest in the love of rules and herbs, which he uses for spiritual and magical purposes. His descendants today include Igwe Titi, Igwe Adabwe, Igwe Eze, ETC, what you can know today commonly as the Nsoka people of Nigeria. They fell into the states of Anambra and Enugu under state creation. Till date, the people of Nsoka are hugely feared because of their knowledge of rules and herbs for religious and spiritual purposes. Other descendants of Eri in the present Igbos include Nsoka, Enugu, Oka, Onisha, and Newi, Ila, Abo, Wale, Ogwashuku, Ibuzo, Asaba, Eziago, Neni, Adazi, Oko, Oreri, Nri, Mpo, Okija, Nando, Nokwa, Achara. They later made up what you know in the Anambra state of old up to Delta, Kogi, and Enugu. It should be of note that some people of Ibagwa of Nsoka may have had their way through where you know today as Nkano, especially in Nike. That is the reason today the Nkano people sees the Nike as the eldest known as Ndij. Till date, in every gathering of the Nkano people, the tradition of cola breaking must be presented to a Nike man. Another question, sir. How old was Eri when he died, and how do the Igbos remember Eri till date? Eri, the first ancestor of the Igbos, died at the age of 140 years. He was buried at Obugad in Aglew. Obuga could be located till date, that it serves as a tourist place for the Israelites. The native people of Aguleri remember their grandfather Eri so dear. They perform annually a traditional feast in remembrance of the return of Eri. The Igbos, while describing a very long time ago, used to say Mweri or Erimwe, meaning long, long time ago. Aguleri is the ancient Edo kingdom narrated in some of our Igbo folk tales of old. Another question, sir. How true is it that Eri was a man of wealth and means? Answer. Eri was wealthy and resourceful, almost like his great-grandfather Abraham. The wealthiness of Eri could be seen today in his descendants, that the Anambra people of Nigeria was home to the wealthiest citizens in Nigeria and beyond. Saluis Odumego Juku was the first African to be a millionaire.